Solutions are evidence-based. Two, we will reach out to all countries and regions, so statistical knowledge is available to everyone. And three, we will train to capture data from the digitization of activities, adapting statistical analysis to future digital trends and technologies. Over the past 50 years, the Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific has become the region's premier training institution for official statistics. We look forward to providing this essential service for another half century and beyond. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the seventh session of the Committee on Statistics. It is our pleasure to convene the session and to be with you today. Before we commence today's session, we have a few housekeeping announcements, but firstly, may I kindly request your attention to, a, to, to watch a short video on COVID-19. Welcome to the United Nations Conference Center, Bangkok. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, your safety is our first priority and we have taken precautionary measures for the protection of everyone in the conference center. All personnel entering the UN premises are subject to thermal screening tests. Hand sanitizers are available throughout the conference center, together with instructions on the correct hygiene procedures. Guidance on preventive measures is displayed around the facility, including contact details of health service providers in Bangkok. All conference halls, meeting rooms, and public spaces have been reconfigured to ensure physical distancing, and we are supporting virtual participation in every way we can. A list of on-site participants and their contact details will be collected before each meeting to enable contact tracing if necessary. Food and beverage facilities follow strict hygiene protocols, an isolation room is ready for any meeting participant with COVID-19 symptoms, fever, and respiratory symptoms such as cough, shortness of breath, and breathing difficulties, so that medical evaluations can be conducted. For more information and concerns, please contact the UN Medical Service at 1333, 1352, 1353, 1761. We kindly ask for you to self-monitor your condition and adhere to current health-related instructions. Thank you for your cooperation and we wish you a successful conference. Stay healthy. Stay safe. The seventh session of the Committee on Statistics is primarily organized as a virtual meeting to ensure the safety and well-being of all delegates during the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as due to the ongoing travel restrictions in many countries in the Asia-Pacific region. While we have a few delegates joining the session physically here at the United Nations Conference Center in Bangkok, the majority are joining us through the e-conferencing platform Kudo or via YouTube. Under the circumstances, this session of the committee has been condensed to three hours per day over three days, which is roughly half the amount of time we usually have for our committee sessions. We therefore kindly request for your support to tailor your interventions to issues for discussion or action only, and to keep your interventions to no more than three minutes. The Secretariat will assist the Chair in keeping time. A timer will be displayed on the screen which will count down the three minutes and you will also be alerted when your three minutes are up and will be asked to wrap up your intervention immediately. Thank you for accommodating so that we can give as many countries the opportunity to speak. To maximize time for discussion, the Secretariat conducted electronic consultations in advance on the five substantive items for this year's session as well as on the annotated provisional agenda. The Secretariat wishes to thank member states that responded to the electronic consultations and the outcomes of these consultations will be presented under the relevant agenda items. Regarding the report of the seventh session, only key decisions made during the session will be captured in the report to be considered for adoption on the final day of this committee session. Proceedings will be captured separately in a chair summary 
to be made available after the committee session and annexed to the report. Remote simultaneous interpretation of the proceedings is provided by the United Nations for the purpose of facilitating communication in light of the fact that there are six official languages of the United Nations, four of which are used at ESCAP. Participants are requested to be mindful of the additional difficulties experienced by interpreters when working in remote mode and of the increased likelihood of disruptions to the audio feed to the interpreters. Only the speech or intervention in the original language is authentic and constitutes an authentic record of proceedings. In case of any inconsistency between the interpretation and the speech or intervention in the original language, the latter shall prevail. In addition, interpreters servicing remote meetings cannot be held liable for interruption of service, pixelation, freezing or loss of visual input, partial or complete loss of audio, audible artifacts, unauthorized access to personal or confidential data, leaking of information due to inadequate soundproofing and or data loss. Thank you for your attention on these matters. May I now please invite the Secretariat to continue the opening of the seventh session of the Committee on Statistics. Distinguished ladies, di di distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, to open the seventh session of the Committee on Statistics of SCAP, please join me in welcoming Kun Wonpeng Kun Wong, the Director General of the National Statistical Office of Thailand, Mr. Mahid Uzu Mahadin, Chief Statistician, Department of Statistics, Malaysia, and Chair of the sixth session of the Committee of Statistics, Ms. Amida Salah Alajabana, Under Secretary General of the United Nations and Executive Secretary of, Ec of the Economic and Social Commission of Asia and the Pacific, Her Excellency, Ms. Takashi Sanai, Minister for In Internal Affairs and Communications, Government of Japan, and Mr. Yoshikai Shijiru, Director General for Policy Planning on Statistical Standards, Government of Japan. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to invite Mr. Mahid Uzu Mahadan, Chief Statistician, Department of Statistics, Malaysia, and Chair of the Sixth Session of the Committee Statistics, to please give his opening statement and to chair this opening session. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uzu from Malaysia, thank you. To the seventh session of the Committee on Statistics. It's a pleasure to be with you. The seventh session is being held in unprecedented times. We are meeting virtually to ensure the safety and the well being of all delegates during COVID-19 pandemic, as well as due to ongoing travel restrictions in many countries in the Asia Pacific. I wish to record my thanks to the Secretariat for bringing us together, and I look forward to three fruitful days of discussion. It is now my pleasure to invite Ms. Wen Pen Pon Wong Director General, National Statistical Office, Thailand, to make the keynote address. Ms. Amida Sansia Ali Javana, Under Secretary General of United Nations and Executive Secretary of ESCAP. Mr. Mohammad Uzi Mahidin, Chair of the Sixth Session and Bureau Member of the Commission on Statistics. Her Excellency Mi Takaichi Sanae, Minister for Internal Affairs and Communication, Government of Japan. Mr. Yoshikai Chojiro, Director General for Policy Planning on Statistical Standards, Government of Japan. And Ms. Gemma Van Handeren, Director of Statistics Division, SCAP. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. First of all, on behalf of the Revian Thai government, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific 
for inviting me to be a part of the open session today. It would have been Thailand pleasure to welcome you all to Bangkok to attend this meeting to person except for the unfortunate circumstance related to the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to convey my sincere appreciation to ESCAP for their efforts to organize this event with remote participation from all over the Asia Pacific region. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we are living through unprecedented times. The COVID-19 had reverberated to every corner of the world. The pandemic has spread to over 200 countries and created economic and social shockwave. Like no other before, the Asia Pacific region, accounting for over half of the world, total global populations, this impact tremendously due to the concentration of economic activity, demographic urbanization, and challenging focus. With the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, Thailand is also affected by the pandemic. It had heavily disrupted the country economy of which tourism is the significant sector. According to the International Monetary Fund, Thailand's GDP is to change by 6.7% in 2020, a revision from a period estimated 2.5% increase. For Thai National Stat Statistical Office, some statistical activity have been struggling. For example, the possibility delay in conducting census enumeration in 2020. I know Thailand is not alone, and many of you are facing face challenges with your population census. This thing is delegates, ladies and gentlemen. At the time of this crisis, government more than ever must rely on timely, reliable data to make decisions to mitigate harm and support the citizens. In addition, given the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, on our interconnected world, decisions made today will have consequences that will last far into the future, affecting people in every region and community. The SCAP Committee on Statistics play a crucial role as an international platform that's being country together to discuss matters of strategic importance to regional statistical development, regional cooperation and formulation of regional position to advance official statistics in line with existing commitment, including the collective vision and framework for action by the Asia Pacific statistical community and the declaration on navigating policy with data to leave no one behind. This is, the, this, is, this is a crucial time for us to continue to working together in the international statistical community to support each other, timely, accurate, and touch tested official statistics are our best bet to ensure no one is left behind. I wish you all a fruitful discussion, stay safe and healthy, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Won uh, Wong, for your keynote address. I now have the honor 
to invite Miss Armida Salsia Alice Jabana Under Secretary General of United Nations and Executive Secretary of the Economics and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific to give her opening remarks on behalf of ESCAP. Her, Her Excellency, Ms. Takaichi Sanai, Minister for Internal Affairs and Communication, Japan, Dr. Muhammad Uzir Mahidin, Chair of the Sixth Session of the Committee on Statistics and Chief Statistician of Malaysia, Ms. Wenpen Poon Wong, Director General of the Thai National Statistics Office, Mr. Roshikai Shojiro, Director General for Policy Planning on Statistical Standards, Government of Japan. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific and to the seventh session of the Committee on Statistics. This session of the committee is being organized in very challenging circumstances that necessitates us to conduct it in a hybrid fashion with limited in-person participation for Bangkok-based representatives and online connection for representatives from the capital. Despite the circumstances, I'm pleased to note the high-level participation to the committee by member states. The committee has very important topics for discussion to support effective implementation of the 2030 Agenda and for managing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are all committed to the 2030 Agenda, which calls for leave no one behind. For this to be materialized, data and statistics are certainly key. This is even more important in light of the COVID-19 pandemic with its huge health and socio-economic impact, targeting which segment of the population and sectors of the economy that are most impacted requires good data and statistics. Not least important is the continuous effort to build the institutions of national statistical offices across the region and hence its official statistics. The importance of building the human resources capacity and harnessing innovation are just to name two of the priority areas. A whole of government approach to data and statistics is essential and your role as chief statisticians and data stewards is important for producing and leveraging official statistics. I am therefore pleased to see three priority areas have been selected by member states to be discussed at this year's committee session, namely integrated statistics and analysis, big data, and human resource management. We stand ready to be guided by your recommendation on what regional action can be taken forward to support member states in these priority areas. May I also take this opportunity to present a draft monitoring and evaluation framework and a baseline report for the declaration navigating policy with data to leave no one behind, which was endorsed by the Commission in 2018. I am committed to prepare an overview of progress with the declaration every two years, and it is a pleasure to fulfill this commitment to you during this committee session. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this year, the Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific, or better known as SIAP, celebrates its 50th year anniversary. I would like to congratulate and express our sincerest appreciation to the Government of Japan for playing a key role in establishing the Institute and supporting it throughout this remarkable journey. The Institute was established to provide training to official statisticians in governments in Asia and the Pacific region to collect, analyze, and disseminate timely and high-quality statistics. These data and statistics are essential for economic and social development planning and decision-making. I am pleased to note that the Institute has provided excellent statistical training and capacity-building services. 
This has contributed to better functioning of statistical systems in the region. As we are working together to accelerate decade of action and to build back better, I'm confident that the Institute will continue to address demands of member states, especially in the context of monitoring the 2030 agenda and emerging technolo technological changes in the years to come. To celebrate this occasion, we have produced a coffee table book to capture the Institute's long-standing history and to highlight priorities and vision for the future. It is my pleasure to virtually launch this volume today. Excellencies, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a very successful and productive discussion during the committee session. I'm looking forward to your recommendations and action points to further guide our work. Thank you for your attention. I would like to thank uh, Ms. Amida Sasya, Alisa Jahbana, and the Secretary General of the United Nations and Executive Secretary of the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific for her opening uh, statement. Let now uh, I invite the Secretary to play a pre-recorded message from Ms. Takaichi Sane, Sane, Minister for International Affairs and the Communication uh, Government of Japan. I am very pleased to see the participation of so many statistical administrators from escape countries, even those who are all busy tackling COVID-19. As a Minister for Internal Affairs and Communications of the host country, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to the United Nations Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific CIAP on its 50th anniversary. CIAP's history of excellence reflects the outstanding leadership of Director Ashish Kumar and his distinguished predecessors. This success also owes much to the untiring effort of CIAP lecturers and the staff members, as well as to the unfailing support and cooperation of ESCAP, its members and associate members and other related organizations. I would like to take this opportunity to express my deepest gratitude for their effort. In the 1960s, many countries in the Asia-Pacific region were struggling with nation building. It was an urgent necessity for those countries to train experts in order to produce official statistics as a basis for national plans for economic and social development. At the same time, Japan was in the midst of a period of rapid growth and searching for new ways to contribute to the region. I would like to commend the wisdom of the Japanese leaders who invited the Statistical Institute to Tokyo and developed it to take on one of the most important roles in the region for nation building, capacity building of the government officials. As the head of the ministry with your national statistical office in a country that raised the regional economy, I am proud of these 50 years 
of contributing to the building of the foundations of statistical competence in the region through SEAP. SEAP has provided training not only to a huge number of participants, more than 20,000 government experts from 145 countries, but also to the leading officers in national government. I am also pleased that many participants have been able to experience daily life in Japan on the occasions that they attended SEAP lectures. SEAP has provided indispensable opportunities for government officials who share the same purpose but come from different backgrounds to learn together with one another. I hope that they have created their own networks and are making good use of them. Although the days of nation building are over, SEAP continues to play a role in addressing emerging challenges. I believe that SEAP has responded to the needs of each country by changing the content of training in line with the times. For instance, e-learning courses have been developed into a useful supporting method as pre-training for face-to-face -face training. Furthermore, since the STZ indicators require innovative statistical methods, further capacity building is crucial for each government. I hope that everyone who trained at SEAP will climb the career ladder utilizing the skills they acquired. The COVID-19 pandemic is forcing the government of many countries to completely challenge how they produce official statistics. I am sure that you are very busy planning and implementing innovative approaches to conducting statistical surveys sustainably as well as responding to the demand for policy-making statistics to solve emerging challenges. In order to address these issues, I believe that the role of SEAP is becoming even more important. I hope that beneficial exchanges of best practices and experiences will be made at today's session. I recognize the importance of the function that she observes and high esteem in which related organizations hold its performance. Therefore, I sincerely look forward to the continued development of SEAP. Furthermore, I believe that SEAP is capable of contributing to the entire world since the Asia Pacific region is currently one of the important centers of the global economy. As a representative of the host country, it is my honest intention to actively support the operations of this unique institute, unlike any other in the world. I would also like to take this opportunity to appeal to all countries for their understanding of strong support for and cooperation with SEA. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for that message, uh, Excellency Ms. Takaichi Sene. Uh, Minister for Internal Affairs and Communication, Government of Japan. Now I would like to proceed to invite uh, Mr. Yoshikai, 
Director General for Policy Planning on Statistical Standards, Government of Japan, to give uh, his statement. Dr. Maud Uzil Mahdin, Chair, Ms. Amida Sausia Al Shabana, Executive Secretary of ESCAP, Mr. Ashish Kumar, Director of the United Nations Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific, Ms. Gemma Van Houderen, Director of the ESCAP Statistics Division, and all others in attendance today. It is my great pleasure to say a few words on behalf of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications of the Government of Japan, the co-operating agency to SEAP. I was appointed to my current position in July. Unfortunately, however, I haven't met all of you in person yet due to the COVID-19 pandemic. First, I would like to thank Executive Secretary Ms. Anshabana and other stakeholders for their efforts in organizing the ESCAP Statistics Committee in a format adapted to new normal, and for hosting the CIAP 50th anniversary webinar. I also would like to express my gratitude to ESCAP for producing the excellent book for CIAP, just presented uh, by Ms. Eshebana. I congratulate CIAP on its 50th anniversary. We are proud of our history of supporting the Institute of the host country. I would like to cooperate with ESCAP to ensure that CIAP can fully perform its functions. Personally, I have been a civil servant for more than 30 years, and it amazes me how ways of working and the meaning of data have changed in those 30 years. In the process of producing official statistics, the focus used to be placed on how efficiently we conduct surveys. It has, however, shifted toward how we can provide reliable data. It is timely that the theme for this year's World Statistic Day is connecting the world with data we can trust. I believe that understanding the current situation utilizing reliable data enable us to think about the future of our society and economy. CIAP has served as a cornerstone of mutual trust in the statistical community through human resource development in this region. And I hope that it continues its contribution well into the future. The Asia Pacific region continues to drive the global economy, which is why I think ESCAP's mission is so important. The statistical community of this region gathered here today, particularly supports the regional and global economy by delivering reliable data. I sincerely hope that we can make fruitful exchange of, of opinions in this session. And Japan will continue to support CIAP. In conclusion, I hope for the further development of everyone participating today, as well as that of SIA. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Mr. Yoshikai, the Director General for Policy Planning on Statistical Standards Government of Japan for his message. That concludes our opening session for the seventh session of the Committee on Statistics. Let me now move on to agenda item 1B, election of officers. Distinguished delegate, ladies and gentlemen, as the chair of the sixth session of committee, I announce today Mr. Ning Jiahe of China will step down from the Bureau together with three distinguished fellow Bureau members, namely Ms. Ali Mua Mua Malafonatua Pasalaina, 
of Samoa, Mr. Sen Yin, Sen Min of Myanmar, and Mr. Said Namatola Mirfala Nasiri of Islamic Republic of Iran. The Committee on Statistics at its first session decided to establish a bureau to assist in it conducting each session and in performing the function of the committee between each biennial session. A set of principles and procedures to govern the election of the bureau were adopted at its second session in document e escape slash cst two slash one in line with this principle and procedure the bureau sh shall be elected at the beginning of each formal session of the committee on statistics and shall consist of a chair three vice chairs and two other members one of whom will act as the rapporteur i have the honor as the outgoing chair to submit my proposal for the next bureau i am confident that the proposed bureau will provide the leadership and experience necessary to continue the important work of this committee over the next two years. I propose Mr. Gogita Todras, Executive Director, National Statistics Office of Georgia, representing Georgia, be elected as the chair. Mr. Pravin Srivastawa, Secretary, Kam Chief Statistician of India, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, representing India, and Ms. Indu Bandara, Director General, Department of Census and Statistics, Sri Lanka, representing Sri Lanka, sharing one spot on the Bureau to be elected as the Vice Chair of the Committee on Statistics of ESCAP. Mr. Kemuri Nakaima, Chief Executive, Fiji Bureau of Statistics, representing Fiji to be elected as one chair. Myself, Mama Uze Mahidin, Chief Statistician, Department of Statistics, representing Malaysia, be re-elected re to the Bureau as the Vice Chair. Mr. Claire Dennis Mappa, Under Secretary, National Statistician and Civil Registrar General, Philippine Statistic Authority, representing Philippines, be elected as member and repertoire. Ms. Bayang Chimek Chilka Suren, Vice Chairperson National Statistic of Mongolia, representing Mongolia, to be elected as members. I strongly believe that the proposed Bureau has strength required to discharge its duties on behalf of the committee as we endeavor to prepare for a, for a data-driven era, COVID-19 and beyond. The floor now open for comments. I recognize the distinguished delegate of Samoa. Yes, madam, now you have the floor.
Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to second the suggestion for members of the Bureau. The proposed Bureau is well placed to lead us towards our collective vision. Thank you. Uh, distinguished Delegate of Samoa. Okay, now I, I also recognize uh, the distinguished delegate of Thailand. Uh, Medet, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I support the proposed new bureau members and believe the new members will be able to discharge their new responsibility with dedication and the principle that guide the statistical communities. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Thailand. Uh, would any other delegation wish to take the floor? Uh, Dr. Erzu, it's the secretariat here. The distinguished delegate from Vietnam would like to take the floor. Yes. Please, sir, you have the floor. Distinguished delegate from Vietnam, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you, Madam. Please. Yes. Uh, the General Statistics Office of Vietnam fully agree with the proposal of the new Bureau. And we wish you will have a, a very successful uh, two years. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, distinguished delegate of uh, Vietnam. Any other delegation uh, wish to take the floor? Yes, we have uh, the delegation from China, followed by the delegation from Pakistan. Yes, can we have? Uh, give, I would like to give the floor uh, to our distinguished delegate from China. We would like to wish the meeting a great success. Thank you for your attention. Yes, we can hear you from China. I, will, I already finished my remarks. Uh, do I need to repeat? from China. Yeah, uh, you have the floor. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We would like to support the proposed uh, bureau members. We would like to uh, to wish this meeting a great success. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, this is a delegate of yes. China. Now I like to give the floor to disagree the delegate of India. India. Hey, sorry, I, 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 I would like to uh, give the floor to the disagreed uh, delegate of Pakistan. My apologies. <laughs> Mr. Javed from Pakistan, the floor is yours. Uh, 
no? Yes. Mr. Mr. Javid, on the bottom of your screen there is a microphone and a video button. Could you please switch these on and we can then hear and see you. Thank you. We can see you but not hear you. Could you please turn your mute off? Thank you. Is it? Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is uh, Dr. Amjad Javid from Pakistan. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, I fully support the nomination uh, for the member and uh, fully agree to uh, hopefully this uh, new uh, office will work for the betterment of statistics in the coming two years. Uh, Pakistan will uh, work with this uh, new office hopefully thank you very much thank you uh, distinguished delegate of pakistan thank you very much uh, we now dr Ozu, we now have the dele uh, distinguished delegate from the russian federation followed yes. by indonesia thank you uh, now i would like to the, the floor first to uh, distinguished uh, delegate of uh, russian uh, federation Thank you, Chairman, and uh, good morning, everybody. I would like to ask you, Chairman, to clarify once again the list of uh, uh, nominees to the new Bureau, because it seems to me that you uh, mentioned seven nominations, but the rules of procedure, as I understand, uh, call for six. Six in, and not seven, including chairman, vice chairman and rapporteur. Could you please clarify again? Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, distinguished uh, delegate of uh, Russian uh, Federation. Uh, as, uh, I, as I propose, uh, for one uh, vice chair, uh, Mr. Pravin uh, Sriwastava, uh, Secretary and Chief Session of India, Ministry of Statistics and Project Permutation, representing India, and moved into Mandara Director General Department of Census Statistics Sri Lanka, representing uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, both uh, of them uh, sharing uh, one spot on the bureau uh, to be elected as my chair of the committee on statistics of SCAP. So the rest, uh, as uh, uh, proposed, uh, uh, one uh, our distinguished delegate from uh, PD, uh, from uh, one distinguished delegate uh, from uh, Philippines. And, and the Philippines is uh, as the a member and also the repertoire and also uh, uh, our colleague from uh, Bongklia as the member and also I also propose myself uh, to be related as the uh, vice chair. Distinguished delegate uh, from uh, Russia I hope that I clarify your, your, your question. Yes, please. Uh, I thank you, Chairman, for the clarifications. I understand there's already been precedent for this kind of practice in our committee. This kind of thing had already occurred. Uh, that that one seat on the bureau is uh, is is shared by more than one person. Uh, uh, Ms. Jema, would like to uh, give some uh, input on this? Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Urzu. So this is a new president of sharing one position 
on the ASCAP Committee of Statistics. However, it is not a new president in the community in the United Nations. We have two countries sharing one position on an intergovernmental and expert group agency on the Sustainable Development Goals, which is um, a formal group managed by the UN Statistical Commission uh, headquarters in the United Nations. For this procedure of sharing this position, we consulted the, um, 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 the, the chairman of the Bureau. We also consulted the two countries, um, the two countries involved who agreed to this situation. For the first year, the member, the distinguished member from India will be the vice chair of the Bureau. And for the second year of the two year term, the member from Sri Lanka has agreed to be the member. So this is not, this is the president has been set. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Gemma, for the clarification. Any uh, one who might uh, take the floor? We have uh, two more speakers on the list, um, delegate from Indonesia and from Bangladesh. And yes. thank you. So I would like to, uh, first uh, to give uh, the floor to distinguished delegate from Indonesia. Uh, our delegate from Indonesia, um, you kindly have the floor. Your microphone has been accepted. Please turn on your microphone and the video on the bottom of the kudo screen. Thank you. Indonesia. Dr. Urzu, um, could I suggest that we move to yeah. Bangladesh yes. and then come back uh, to Indonesia? Uh, yes. And we also have Russia on the speakers list. So Bangladesh, okay. Indonesia, and Russia. Thank you. All right. Uh, can we, uh, uh, I would like to give the floor to uh, the uh, disagree delegate from uh, Bangladesh. Thank you, Chair. Yep. This is Muhammad Imdadul Haq from Bangladesh. Dear Dr. Manadir Durab Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. We also support the nomination. I hope they will work for betterment of the for the next two years. Right. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished uh, delegate of Bangladesh. Uh, I would like to give the floor to distinguish the great leader of Russia. Thank you, Chairman. I would like to seek clarification from the Secretariat. I'd like to find out whether any there is any specific precedent for this kind of practice within ESCAP. You've mentioned the precedent within the UN, uh, at, you know, in general, but what about es ESCAP uh, itself? Madam Chair, we like to uh, come in. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to um, ask the Secretariat of the Commission, who is with me here today, if he could please uh, respond to this uh, president within the Commission. Thank you. 
thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, so I would like to <clears throat> uh, respond to the distinguished delegate of the Russian Federation about in terms of procedure, what precedents are there. Um, so the, the rules of procedure of the Commission provide for usually one chair and two vice chairs. Now this, uh, this rule uh, has been uh, waived or, or amended by members of the Commission um, a few times. Uh, at the Commission itself, it's, uh, it's customary for the Commission to elect a chair and all the uh, officials uh, at the ministerial level, um, uh, you know, high-ranking officials at the ministerial level to be elected as vice chairs. So every time for the Commission we have a bureau that consists of more than, than three, three members. Uh, similarly, for the other committees of ESCAP, um, you know, member states have decided to uh, elect more members uh, of the bureau, sometimes uh, four, sometimes five, uh, uh, you know, according to, to the needs of, of that specific body and also to give uh, a, a, a balanced uh, geographical representation in, in the Bureau. In this case, uh, the, the, the Committee of Statistics has, uh, as a subsidiary body of the Commission, has adopted its own rules of procedure. So usually the Bureau, as you corrected, mentioned, correctly mentioned, uh, provides for six uh, members. Uh, in this case, because the the process of uh, um, you know, selecting a new bureau goes through uh, uh, nominations that are solicited from, from member states. So every member state was invited to uh, nominate you know, uh, 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 members for the new bureau. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, these are the these seven uh, nominations of the ones that have been received. And obviously there has been some prior consultations among the, um, the members, the, the proposed members of the new bureau, and uh, consultations obviously with the, uh, with the chair of the sixth uh, session of the, of the committee. And the understanding is that, uh, you know, uh, these, these seven are proposed. Uh, given that the bureau is a standing bureau, so it's not just the bureau for this meeting of three days today, but it's a bureau that uh, has to conduct work in between the sessions as well. Uh, the understanding is that the delegates from India and Sri Lanka will also alternate, um, uh, so, uh, and, and, and basically will take care of the intersessional work, uh, one in one year and the other one in the second year. But obviously for, for the purpose of this meeting, the, the, the seven proposed candidates will be elected in the Bureau. And again, this is in line with, with other precedents of, uh, of ISCAP, the Commission in premis, but also the other committees. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Gemma and, uh, and uh, the Secretary for, for the presentation. And uh, thank you uh, to uh, distinguish uh, delegate uh, Russian uh, Federation. Uh, Dr. Erzuritz, um, the Secretary here, we have no more requests to speak in this item. No more requests. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Gemma and the uh, Secretary. So, I would like to thank uh, the committee uh, for supporting uh, my proposal. So, we have uh, uh, Vietnam. China, Pakistan, and the Russian Federation, uh, and also Bangladesh and Pakistan, uh, uh, and several others, uh, distinguished uh, delegate for the uh, feedback and also uh, proposal. So uh, I, I would like to declare that the Committee on Statistics has elected by acclamation the following delegate to serve on each bureau as chair mr gogita Todraj, representing georgia as white chair mr pravin triwastawa representing india and miss miss indu bandara representing sri lanka sharing one on the bureau, Mr. Kemuli Naikama, 
representing PD and my staff, Mahmoud Uzim Aydin, representing uh, Malaysia. And as members, Mr. Claire Dennis Mapa, representing Philippines, as member and repertoire of the seventh session of the committee. Ms. Bayang Timek, Chil Ka Shuen, representing Mongolia. On behalf of all present, it is my privilege to congratulate the re-elected and elected members of the Bureau and extend my very best wishes for success in the important work ahead. Before I invite the newly invited chair, I would like to take this place as the chair of the committee. Please allow me to say a few words as the outgoing chair. It has been a great honor for me personally to serve as your chair over the last two years. I admire the level of expertise, enthusiasm, and the commitment in our community. My thanks to all of you for providing such a rich source of inspiration. And of course, was this today's session is really unprecedented. It will be recorded in history because it's for very first time we have the virtual meeting in the, for the uh, Statistic Commission. Special thanks to my friends and colleagues who have served with me on the Bureau. Your generosity of spirit and support have ensured my tenure as the chair of the Bureau has been not only a wonderful learning opportunity, but also a very really great pleasure. I now have the honor to invite Mr. Gorita Todraj as the newly elected chair to take his place as the chair of the committee. Mr. Gogita, please. Mr. Gagita, um, would you um, please turn on your video and the microphone floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and great pleasure to express my uh, sincere appreciation to uh, distinguished delegates of today's session and to greet all of you again on the occasion of the election of members of ESCAP committee. Uh, the opportunity to address the newly elected chair of the I'm grateful to support demonstrated to my country and to me, especially in terms of delivery strong mandate to perform of the book effectively. Let me stress appreciation significant work already carried out by ESCAP, the worship partner for the countries of Asia and Pacific in uh, supporting intergovernmental dialogue and implementing programs for capacity building in statistics. Furthermore, I would like to express sincere thanks and appreciation to the People's Republic of China, the Islamic Republic of Iran, Myanmar, and the out 
statistic for their extraordinary contribution. I assure you that as a member, your statistical is your who will continue supporting the flow of the ESCAP Committee on Statistics F to accomplish its tasks delivering conditions setting statistical priorities. The members of the Bureau and I shall do our best to ensure that this Committee on Statistics achieves its objectives and reaches successful conclusion. We pledge to honor your trust to by discharging our responsibilities with dedication, professional ethics, and principles that guide the international statistical curve. Let me conclude by satisfying to its who are supporting me here today. Uh, I hope that we will have very fruitful cooperation together during the next term. Um, important deliberations are ahead of us. I am mindful that as the chair of the statistics, it is incumbent upon me to do my best to ensure that this great concrete decisions that shape the of statistical board in Asia Pacific region. By means of this, we are going to implement key functions of the Bureau in reviewing and analyzing progress in the development of statistics in Asia and Pacific, with particular attention to the guidelines and recommendations of the UN Statistical Commission and international recognized best practices. Uh, successful session. Thank you very much for your support and for your attention. Mr. Gagator, it's uh, the Secretariat here. Um, thank you for, for your opening speeches. Could we now invite you to move to agenda item 1C, adoption of the agenda? Thank you. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, let us now turn to agenda item 1C on the of the adoption of the agenda as presented to your in document uh, ESCAP to ST Flash 2020 secret under two electronic to today's session. I'd like to thank all countries for their support uh, the agenda as contained flash 2020 flash l dot and provide valuable advice and guidance for conduct of the session i now invite any comments on the agenda from the floor Uh, Mr. Gagator, Secretariat, there is no comments from the floor in ESCAP yes, Hall or I see online. No, it's contained in document ESCAP CST uh, and those is adopted. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, this is agenda item one. Thank you very much. We will now just move, move the rostrum and we can then proceed to the next item. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Please proceed to 
uh, the start of agenda item two. Back to you, Mr. Gagita. Thank you. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we shall now take up agenda item two, soliciting all of government support for statistics in the context of the threat agenda for sustainable development. Before we on the country the liberations to reiterate the ground rules for discussion. <laughs> this agenda item. Thank you very much. All other agenda items, the three given compressed for this meeting, we for for your interventions, mainly to issues for discussions or action only to keep your interventions to no more than three minutes. I strongly urge delegations to keep interventions brief and focused. Please keep an eye on the timer displayed on the screen. You will be alerted by the Secretariat when your three minutes are up and will be asked to wrap up your interventions immediately. Technical limitations of and in mandates requirement the price will be given to the members and permanent observers to deliberate limited opportunities on procedural matters will be available for observer organizations, intergovernmental organizations, and other entities, depending on availability of time. Thank you for your attention. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, let us now turn to agenda item 2B, monitoring progress in line with the advancing official statistics for the sustainable development, collect vision and framework for action by the Asia Pacific statistical community, and the declaration on navigating policy with data to leave no one behind. President, presented. Escap slash slash one. A conference room paper. A monitoring framework and guidelines for the collective vision and framework for action by the Asia Pacific Statistical Community and the declaration of the navigating policy with data to leave no one behind. ESCA flash CST flash 2020 flash CRP.1 is also available. Item and 2C, the after be introduced and the floor open for any interventions depending availability of time. I now give the floor to Mr. Naigama. Feed Bureau statistics to introduce the item to be as of the electronic consultations for this agenda item. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you to be monitoring progress in line with the entitled Advancing Official for the 2030 for Sustainable Development a collective vision and framework for action by the Asian Pacific 
fiscal agent uh, community and the declaration of navigating policy with data to leave no one behind. As per the agenda for the session, we, the members, are under this agenda item invited to consider and adopt a monitoring and evaluation framework for the regional agreement subject to changes at a Next slide, please. In advance of today's session, electronic consultation was conducted by the Secretariat for this topic. I take the opportunity to sincerely thank the representatives from Armenia, Azerbaijan, Hong Kong, China, India, Indonesia, Japan, Pakistan, Philippines, Republic of Korea, and Singapore, who provided details and informed inputs. Next slide, please. The inputs to the electronic consultation point to the adjustment of the proposed monitoring and evaluation framework subject to a few amendments. The major change is to drop indicator P.3 on tier three SDG from the framework. There are no longer any indicators in global monitoring framework. Respondents also support the results of baseline report and made recommendations for future implementation of the framework. In particular, it was recommended that the Secretariat validate data with NSOs produced by NSOs, make national data available, and assess relevance of proposed targets when necessary. Next slide, please. Based on the inputs received, I propose the following draft decision. This proposal is naturally subject to revision based on interventions today by you, my fellow members of the committee. The draft decision is the committee endorses the draft monitoring and evaluation framework for the collective vision and framework for action and the declaration of navigating policy with data to leave no one behind to advance official statistics for 2030 agenda for sustainable development subject to amendments. Let me reiterate the proposal is based on only 11 members of the committee and as such is revision and amendments based on our deliberations today. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my introduction to agenda item 2B. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Naika. I now invite uh, any comments on agenda item to be from the floor? Please focus your interventions on the monitoring and evaluation framework for the uh, regional agreement to advance official statistics for the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I also remind all delegations to keep their interventions to no more than three minutes. Uh, special instances of the I please
the secretariat uh, assistance with uh, managing site, ensuring uh, as, uh, the discussions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as requested by the chair, I now invite comments on agenda item 2B from the floor. To maintain order and for delegations to be ready to take the floor when I call on the speaker, I will also announce the delegation next in line. Uh, just some quick reminders for those joining us via the e-conferencing platform Kudo. To request for the floor, kindly click on the request to speak button. When your request to speak is accepted by the secretariat and you are called upon to take the floor, kindly click on the mic on and the camera on buttons on the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Kindly release mic when you have completed your intervention. The secretariat will be monitoring the messaging function in Kudo, the icon for which is on the right hand side of the bar. However, all substantive questions or interventions should be raised through your delegation by using the request to speak button only. For technical questions related to Kudo, you may reach out to the operator by clicking the operator's tab under the messaging icon and typing your message there. To select the preferred UN language, the drop-down menu is available on the lower left of your screen. And finally, to prevent echoes and interference, please ensure all other devices connected to Kudo in the same room, room are turned off. May I now invite the distinguished delegate of Japan to take the floor, followed by China. Distinguished delegate of Japan, the floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, some of the indicators presented in Annex 2 may have already been achieved. However, the error symbol is improving, no change, and worsening, showing strong in the current Annex 2 do not include the symbol to indicate completion. We would like to propose the addition of a new symbol for completed. Second, uh, we recognize the importance of the collective vision and framework for action and the preparation of investigating policy in achieving SDGs in the Asia Pacific region. We believe that the monitoring and evaluation framework proposed by the Secretariat is reasonable since uh, it will be organized in line with existing strategies and it allows us to use available information as much as possible in order to reduce the burden on member countries and the Secretariat. On the other hand, we do not believe that all the indicators can be calculated in each country. Since the SDG indicators vary in their characteristics, for example, some should be calculated at the global level and others target developing countries. For this reason, the evaluation of progress toward the SDGs in each country should be based on standards for that particular country as a general rule. It is important to grasp progress toward the SDGs in the Asia-Pacific region, and we basically support the proposed framework However, we would like to request that the SDGs be evaluated and published in consideration of the circumstances of each country whenever possible, rather than evaluated uniformity. As a mid- and long-term national strategy, Japan adopted the SDG implementation guiding principles revised the edition in December of last year based on the latest trends surrounding the SDGs. We also adopted the SDGs Action Plan 2020, which compiled specific measures for the promotion of the SDGs to be implemented in 2020. Under the SDGs Promotion Headquarters, which are headed by the Prime Minister and consisted of all cabinet members, the government is making an unified effort to promote various measures for the realization of a sustainable society with no one left behind, based on these strategies. While it is important to appropriately monitor the implementation status of these measures and link them to follow-up and review, 
We believe that this requires capacity building at NSOs. In view of the third, uh, part of, part of 31 of the document SCAP CST 2021 mentions that there is no data on SDG indicator 1441, portion, portion of fish within biologically sustainable level in the area of Pacific region. As an example of low data availability for tier one indicators. However, as shown by the global metadata for indicator one, Distinguished delegate of Japan, you've exceeded your three minutes. Uh, it was could you kindly wrap up your intervention? At the country level, at least at the time of the comprehensive review in March 2020. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Japan. Uh, may I call in the distinguished delegate of Can you hear me? Can, can you hear me? Thank you, Chair. First of all, I would like to congratulate you on the election of the chairmanship of the session. I would like to uh, thank the, uh, the chair and the uh, members of the bureau for the uh, previous uh, session. Over the past two years, uh, the uh, CEAP has conducted a lot of work around the uh, program of action and the vision with uh, the uh, navigation with data, uh, leaving no one behind. And the uh, institution has uh, conducted a lot of effective work and has improved the uh, um, monitoring framework. Uh, we highly appreciate the uh, 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 the committee on uh, statistics for the work and the contribution. I would like to emphasize that the uh, in Asia Pacific, as the most uh, uh, important uh, region in the economic development, especially uh, in the uh, under the uh, background of the uh, COVID-19. It's important to uh, strengthen cooperation to seek uh, common development. China will continue to uh, work with the China uh, uh, UN uh, project on uh, capacity, statistical capacity building. Uh, we will uh, continue to uh, provide support uh, the uh, capacity building activity for uh, member countries uh, to promote the monitoring efforts uh, to leave no one behind. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate of China. Philippines, you have the floor, followed by oh. India. Good, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. The Philippines, through the Philippines District Authority, recognizes the importance of the monitoring and evaluation framework for the regional collective vision and framework for action and the declaration of navigating policy with data to leave no one behind. In line with the commitment of the different countries, the Philippine Statistics Authority proposes the development of a policy that will support in engaging users and investing in statistics, assuring quality and instilling trust in statistics and using integrated statistics for analysis. Furthermore, advocating for evidence-based news reporting, decision and policy making must be continued. The Philippine Statistics Authority with regards to capacity building proposes that these activities should not be limited to data producers and the national statistics offices, but also to include data users, particularly the media and policymakers in understanding and utilizing statistics whenever possible and relevant. The Philippines proposes to include three additional indicators for the result matrix to determine one, whether the National Statistics Office produces infographics, 
video graphics, and other digital media for dissemination. Two, whether the conduct of consultative and dissemination fora, webinars, or press conference is a regular practice of the National Statistics Office in disseminating statistical information. And three, whether the National Statistics Office staff are receiving capacity building to effectively communicate statistics. The Philippines fully supports the endorsement, the monitoring, and evaluation framework which provides importance and necessary guidance and assistance to producers and users of quality data in support of the 2030 Agenda, including constant dialogues, empowerment of national statistical offices, and the national statistical systems. Investment in statistics and statistical offices, capacity building, and leveraging the use of information and communication technology involving a whole of government approach at all levels from the national and sub-national governance. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, distinguished delegates of the Philippines. Uh, India, you have the floor, followed by Timo Leste. Good morning, delegates. And uh, we would like to thank the chair uh, for getting this session and uh, congratulations on your um, your uh, elections. And we want to thank the uh, participants for uh, electing India as the vice chair for the first year. India supports the proposed monitoring and evaluation framework, and. Uh, we have certain suggestions. We support the suggestions given by Philippines for looking at uh, supporting ICT initiatives as well as for capacity building. But in addition to that, under the uh, NX1 action area B, integrated statistics for integrated analysis, we would propose that a development of a statistical strategy should also be included so that. There, there, is a, uh, there is a direct intervention for uh, getting disaggregated data at uh, various regional and sub-regional levels. In addition to that, we also propose that under partner commitments, section 5C, uh, there should be uh, under continue to strengthen international statistical standards and provide technical support, uh, P3, uh, there are, um, we, we find that there are some agreed metadata standards which are redundant at this stage as there are no CSV indicator in the global indicator framework. So you may like to record this. Uh, in addition to that, we would like to say that uh, the, uh, if the UNS CAP would uh, collaborate in terms of fixing up quantifiable indicators, uh, targets where they have not been fixed globally at least for the regional level, it will be helpful to the member country. Uh, Chair, we support the finding of the baseline report on the progress towards implementation of the collective vision and framework for action and implementation, navigating policy with data to leave no one behind. And we, uh, as such, we endorse the proposed monitoring and evaluation dashboard performance supporting campaign. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate of India. Uh, Timur Leste, you have the floor, followed by Indonesia. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair and all, to all delegates. My delegate would like to emphasize that Timur Leste is the importance of the Committee of Statistics and welcome to all the statistics report as well as its commitments for advancing official statistics for 2030 agenda for sustainable development to leave no one behind. The issue of achievable restriction with statistics as a very important component that helps the country to record vital information, such as births, deaths, and other vital events, in order to in order for individual to to 
to claim identity, civil status, ensuring rights. Civil research and literacy will ensure that we get everyone in the picture, as mentioned in the, point, the main point of the ministerial declaration. Timor Leste continue in its effort to increase the registration system through expansion of the gold registration offices and establishing online and mobile gold registration. In addition to that, the government is also gathering update population data, including gold registration through the population and house census every five years. In order to have more updated data, timely data for the country, social and economic planning, the government of Timor Leste is enhancing reporting administrative data, including world registration, and aiming to achieve the cycle of the population of housing census from the current five years to 10 years by 2030. Furthermore, to implement the administrative declaration, the government of Timor Leste has the approval law and approved a national action plan for children 2016 to 2020, which stipulate the action towards universal border registration and civil rights and related issues. Timor Leste is committed to strengthening its effort to ensure that all children are provided with certificates free of charge, including through mobile units and outreach programs in remote areas of the state and raising awareness of the importance of board registration adopted in implementing the practical registration board. Responding to the regional action from work on civil registration and vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific, in the Asia and Pacific GRVS, okay, in which board registration is critical component. The government of Timor Leste has adopted the historical declaration to get everyone in the picture. Despite the challenge Timor Leste is facing, Timor Leste is, is continuing to seek this government and others to member to help us in order to develop our uh, civil research systems in order to implement all the steps mentioned in the Shaba report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Timor Leste. Indonesia, you have the floor, followed by Malaysia. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving me opportunities. Okay. First of all, we wish to thanks to the UNSCAP Statistics Division for preparing the draft. Regarding the document, we would like to briefly comment to several points as follow. For the section two, result diagram. In our opinion, the result diagram is clear and very well structured. However, the role of the private sector, academic and researchers are not visible yet in the diagram. As you know that the national statistical agencies need to collaborate with other parties in developing the national statistical system, especially with the growing need for statistics. With the increasing diversity of data sources in the digital era like today, big data owned by private parties can be utilized for statistical purposes. However, in order to be able to produce official statistics from the new data sources, access to the, to the data is required so that it can be explored and studied further. In addition, the adequacy of the methodology also has to be supported by academic and researchers. And for the section two, sorry, for the section three, result matrix by commitment, we have a comment that, as we know that currently all countries in the world are being hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has an impact on the delay or inability to run several agendas and plans that have been made by national statistical agencies. Therefore, we propose that the baseline and target on the matrix by commitment can be adjusted by considering which countries or region are most affected by COVID-19. So as a result, there will be 
two types of baseline and target. The initial one, as in the existing matrix now, and the adjusted one. For sure, these things need a discussion further in determining the new target. And my last comment regarding the indicator specification. In relation to COVID-19, from our point of view, the fully funded provision in indicator H1 become questionable. Why? As we know that the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in budget reallocation and priorities in many countries. This certainly affect the budgeting for the development of national statistics. So we propose to substitute the fully funded provision with still in priority. So the indicator become whether the national statistical plan is still in priority. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving me opportunity. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Indonesia. Malaysia, you have the floor, followed by Bangladesh. Very good day. Thank you very much for uh, Mr. Chair and good morning, good morning to everyone. Uh, here we would like to welcome and support the draft monitoring and evaluation framework for the advancing official statistics of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. We believe the implementation of the framework will minimize the resource implication for monitoring the progress towards achieving the targets of the Sustainable Development Goals related to physical development. The result diagram prepared by ESCAP is well developed in order to monitor and evaluate the statistical requirement of the 2030 Agenda for the SDG. Moreover, we believe it provides a clear guidelines for countries on the nine commitments to deliver innovative, trusted and timely products and services. It is also recommended that the best way to report the progress of the monitoring and evaluation framework is by using a schematic dashboard. Sharing our practices in Malaysia, currently our uh, five-year transformation plan is in line with the progress of FDG as well as we are also participating actively in the uh, formulation of uh, development plan for uh, five nation uh, uh, development plan and uh, we also uh, to address here that we would like to participate actively in any meetings and forum that uh, can build our capacity especially enhance the national scale office and national scale system capacity in producing a greater data and uh, more uh, granular data for the policy making processes and uh, I think uh, there's a very short uh, note from us. Thank you very much. Come back to Secretariat. Thank you. Thank you, Distinguished Delegate of Malaysia. Bangladesh, you have the floor, followed by Mongolia. A very good morning to all. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Honorable Chair, Excellencies, and Distinguished Delegates. Bangladesh welcome the proposed monitoring and evaluation framework and also the baseline report prepared by SCAP for this committee meeting, but also observes that in localizing SDGs, local level circumstances also need to consider. First, let me highlight some major efforts Bangladesh has taken so far in line with different SDG goals related to data and official statistics, and also in line with declaration on navigating policy with data to leave no one behind, endorsed by the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific in its 75th session in 2019. Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, the NSO of Bangladesh under Statistics and Informatics Division has adopted the modern technologies in their data collection and processing activities, considering both the demand side needs and supply side possibilities of a data production. Bangladesh has finalized the data gap analysis and published a document titled Setting Priorities for Data Support for SDGs. Bangladesh is exploring the possibility of generating disaggregated data to ensure the statistical 
visibility of the under, underprivileged groups in sustainable development efforts. As such, it is keen to develop and strengthen partnership with different implementing agencies and all relevant stakeholders, including custodian agencies of SDGs, indicators, and other relevant international communities. In Bangladesh national statistical system, data source along with data generation activities have been identified and mapped for SDGs. Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, the National Statistical Office, is performing the leading role to ensure the data generation for SDGs. The Government of Bangladesh has launched an online SDG tracker, which is being administered by SDG Cell of BBS, where all data generating ministries are connected to provide data on the platform electronically. To harmonize data generation from different data producing agencies, the National Data Coordination Committee has been formed. Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics has prepared a comprehensive action plan and methodological guidelines towards data generation and disaggregation for monitoring and evaluation of SDGs, which is synchronized with the SDG tracker system. In this action plan, deadline and frequency for data generation and reporting has been set for each of the indicators with the reporting rounds. A technical working committee with subject matter experts headed by BBS has been working to review, the, uh, to review and authenticate the data submitted electronically in the SDGs, SDG tracker before publishing it. The minimum set of data, disaggregation dimensions and categories were also identified at the indicator level. The data generating agencies are being continuously trained up on SDGs metadata in light of their responsibility in data generation. Technical support are being provided to all the data generating agencies from National Statistical Office, either for compilation of administrative data or conducting sample service. Still, there are many existing challenges to capture and generate data for SDGs. COVID-19 brought more challenges in this path. Bangladesh hope that we need more innovation in using modern ICT tools and techniques to face all these challenges. Distinguished and make delegate the of Bangladesh, goal. could you kindly wrap up? Goal of no one left behind. And to achieve this, we need more co co international cooperation and support at this difficult point of time. Thank you all. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Bangladesh. Uh, Mongolia, you have the floor, followed by Singapore. Hello? Okay. First of all, I would like to congratulate you, Chair. And I would like to express that it's a great honor for the National Statistics Office of Mongolia to be a member of the Bureau of the Committee of Statistics for Asia and Pacific. And looking forward to cooperate with you and provide our best efforts to achieve goals and targets set for us. Regarding uh, the report. Distinguished Delegate of Mongolia, we don't hear you any longer. Uh, we still don't hear you, please. Could we come back to uh, Mongolia while you check your uh, settings for the speaker? Uh, if you don't mind, can I just move to the distinguished delegate of Singapore and I'll come back to you, Mongolia? Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the very well written and comprehensive paper. Uh, we have actually provided a comment to the electronic consultation, and I will just highlight a few key points here. Singapore supports the monitoring framework with some suggestions. We check the data for Singapore based on the sources for the 20 indicators that were mentioned in the paper. Some of the data indicated for Singapore we found is not correct, while some of the data could not be found in the cited sources. As such, we suggest that SCAP uh, send the relevant data to the countries to validate first before using the data. 
uh, our second suggestion is to allow countries to provide proxy or alternate indicators that demonstrate the country commitments that is more representative of the country situation. And I guess this is also in line with the comments mentioned by some of the delegates. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate of uh, Singapore. Mongolia, are you on the line? All right, we, we will try to come back to you. Uh, may I now invite the distinguished delegate of Pakistan, followed by the Russian Federation. Uh, this is uh, uh, Dr. Amjad. Thank you very much, Chair, for inviting me. Uh, we fully support the monitoring framework developed by the committee. Um, we appreciate the endeavors of SPIP and the Committee on Statistics to strengthen the statistical system in Asia and Pacific region. Collectively, to talk take all with each other is really the right direction as countries having fewer resources are unable to develop their statistical system to produce need-based data required for decision making. And we really can't leave no one behind if and only if everyone has access to at least basic facilities and need of life to live. But it is not possible without food food planning or policy making for which data is the basic requirement. Therefore, improvement in data collection activities is required to take all the countries collectively through effective strategies for strengthening regional statistical system. The results shown in the diagram and result matrix reveal the weak areas like statistical literacy and big data. No doubt every country is doing its best efforts, but there is need to improve the system to achieve the 2030 target. Countries may judge their weak areas and plan for improvement with the support of escape. The partners must support countries where there is real need of improvement in data collection system. We propose more emphasis on capacity building, particularly with respect to big data, because it is a new concept. Statistical literacy also needs more emphasis in all the countries. There is also need to work to streamline the non-official statistics, which are really competitors of official statistics. We need to uh, uh, check their methodologies and their ways to PBS has started, Pakistan Bureau of Statistics has started digital transformation from paper-based data collection to Android-based data collection here in Pakistan. And hopefully PPS is working also for SDGs, but there is still need to improve for working as a few SDGs has uh, still not, uh, I mean, addressed in Pakistan. Therefore, there is need to support from escape for Pakistan in this regard. Thank you very much. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Pakistan. The distinguished delegation, delegate of the Russian Federation, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. The Russian Federation supports uh, the activity of the Commission and the Secretariat in the field of uh, increasing the quality of official statistics in the Asia-Pacific region in particular for the purposes of monitoring progress in the implementation of the SDGs. Consequently, we see great importance in the implementation of uh, the tasks uh, in the framework plan of action, which are enshrined in the declaration adopted in 2017. In particular, we would like to stress the uh, timeliness of uh, resolving the issues connected with uh, the obligations undertook by development partners and the need to have consultations with national statistics uh, offices before statistical surveys and censuses as well as consultations with uh, 
uh, national institutions inter before the collection of data. We believe uh, in under these conditions uh, the uh, partnership for development will make it possible to improve the statistics and the overall quality of statistics in the region. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished delegate of the Russian Federation. Uh, distinguished delegate of Mongolia, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Regarding the letter, please to uh, discuss the question of mobilizing resources to support countries and address the treating of the legislative provisions and institutional mechanisms to enable statistical system to take advantage of new data, data sharing, and innovative technologies and advocacy for the expanded use of official statistics for evidence-based policy making and transparent governance. As a member of the Paris Network, the Nusa Mongolia will be available to collaborate on future activities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Mongolia. I now see no further requests to speak. Um, so as requested by the chair, I now invite my colleague from the Secretariat, Mr. Arman Bidabaknia, to share a summary of the discussions on agenda item 2B. Thank you. Um, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, um, the committee reviewed draft monitoring and framework and the baseline report and made the following recommendations and observations. Uh, the committee recognized the importance of the monitoring, the proposed monitoring and evaluation framework for strengthening the coordination for statistical development for leaving no one behind. The committee uh, specifically make, made recommendations as follows. On the indicators, uh, the committee suggested to add indicators regarding the statistical communication. Also proposed a new wording for indicator H2 on funding for statistics. The committee also uh, proposed that we uh, uh, regularly assess the relevance of the uh, proposed targets for the indicators and also allow the countries to add additional indicators as uh, related to their uh, specific context. On the result diagram, the committee recognized the importance of highlighting the, the, the role of the local governments and disaggregated uh, statistics and um, also the role of partnership with private sector ac and academia. The, the committee also highlighted the importance of emphasizing on the statistical literacy and, and capacity for use of big data and alternative and new sources of data. On the baseline um, report, the committee um, emphasized the importance of using dashboard as the best way of communication and also uh, proposed the need for validating national data with countries before used for the reporting. The, the committee also highlighted the, the role of partners uh, in uh, fulfilling their commitments, in, in particular in development of the international standards and metadata for SDG indicators, um, and also um, emphasize the importance of close collaboration between partners and national statistical offices before conducting statistical activities. Overall, the committee, uh, th there is a, a consensus among the committee members to endorse the proposed monitoring and, and evaluation um, framework uh, after amendment for uh, proposed changes uh, during today's deliberations as well as the e-consultation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Back to you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Back to you. I'm done with the summary. Uh, 
Mr. Chair, are you on the line? Uh, it looks like we may have lost uh, the connection with uh, Georgia. So, uh, is it we bring we this brings us to the conclusion of discussion under agenda item two B. Uh, thank you to all delegates uh, for the inputs that you have provided to this agenda item, and uh, we will now move on to agenda items two A and two C. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, could you kindly lead us into agenda item 2A and 2C, please? Yes, sorry. Thank you very much. So first of all, Mrs. Saro and Mr. Bibal Bakinia, this brings us to conclude of discussions on the agenda. Turn to the remaining two items for agenda uh, for agenda uh, two agenda item two a uh, on follow up on discussions. The statistics presented to you in document slash twenty twenty slash nf slash and commonly this paper flash CST 20 flash and F2 and agenda one in the peak registration and vital statistics as a accelerator for the 2030 agenda for sustainable development as presented to you in document ESCA flash um, 76 flash 23 uh, flash uh, rev dot one and ESCA flash CST flash 2020 flash INF flash three. Um, unfortunately, as you are aware, for uh, intervention on the two, uh, so I propose written interventions which will be equally included in the cheer sum and oral intervention. Now uh, to invite uh, Mark uh, and summary of discussions and Ms. Gemma, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. It's my pleasure to introduce these two information items um, on follow-up decisions made at the sixth session of the Committee of Statistics and 2C on monitoring progress in response to get everyone into the picture. Next slide, please. Information item 2A um, is a summary of um, progress made with regard to the decisions from the previous committee and committee members are invited to take note of progress and also may wish to provide guidance on findings in the report of the establishment of communities of practice and the trial of data integration community practice. As our chair has just advised, due to and in the interest of time, we will not take country interventions on this item, but please provide us with your interventions in writing and we will be very happy to post these on our website and include, um, make a, ensure they contribute to the chair's summary for this item. Next, please. Agenda item, to the information item 2C on monitoring progress in response of Get Everyone Into the Picture, initiative on civil registration and vital statistics. Uh, the committee is invited to express its views on progress made to date on the goals of the Asia Pacific Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Decade and to provide advice on further implementation on the regional framework, as well as support the preparations for the second ministerial conference, 
which has been moved due to COVID-19 from November this year to the second half to late 2021. And we are working closely with the regional steering group on preparations for the ministerial. Next, please. So we invite members of the committee to note these information papers, and I'll now hand back to the chair to close this session. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mrs. Van Halderen. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes agenda item two. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we will just move the rostrum, but please do start agenda item 4A. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, ladies and gentlemen, the conference will now agenda A, priority issues, counting, integrated statistics and analysis. There is no document uh, pertinent to this agenda item, regional and national efforts with economic satellite and environmental accounts in Asia and the Pacific, ESCA flash, CST flash 2020 flash uh, three. As per the annotated agenda, this agenda item will be discussed in the format of seminar our discussion, uh, great pleasure, Mr. Mot Uzir, Chief Statistician, Department of Statistics, Malaysia, to introduce agenda item. Can, can you hear me? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, distinguished uh, delegates and ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to introduce agenda item 4A, seminar on priority issues. Accounting for Integrated Statistic Analysis. As per the annotated agenda for the session, we, the members of the committee, uh, under this agenda item, invited to share our national progress and perspective on accounting for integrated statistics and analysis. As mentioned by the chair, we also have before us document escape slash PST slash 2020 slash 3 on regional and national efforts with economic satellite and environmental accounts in Asia and the Pacific. The document present, present information on global and regional mechanism to avoid accounting in national transport system, describe opportunities for regional influence to advance accounting and invite, invite this committee to discuss how regional collaboration on account may be best support and strengthen 
international effort and how excel may future in each future work. Consider and express its views on each of the opportunities for regional action to support national, regional and global efforts to outline in section five of document as cap slash TST slash twenty twenty slash three. Next slide please. Two consultation on the topic preceded session. First, member states and associate members were invited to provide input through electronic consultation. I take the opportunity to sincerely thank the representative from Armenia, Azerbaijan, Hong Kong, China, India, Indonesia, Japan, Pakistan, Philippines, Republic of Korea, and Singapore, who provided detail and informative inputs. The preparation for today's session also benefited from a state campaign on accounting for integrated statistics and analysis. The state cafe discussed how regional collaboration on account may support and strengthen national effort with wider audience. I hope you had the chance to join the event which was attended by 130 participants from 20 countries and representing 31 institutions highlighting the interest in account in the region. I extend my warm thanks to my fellow panelists in the cafe, Ms. Vivian R. Marina, Philippine Statistics Authority, Mr. Luka Ali Lua Alani, Samoa Statistics, and Mr. Ben Wilson from the Global Ocean Account Partnership. Next slide, please. The input to the electronic consultation emphasized the potential benefit of regional collaboration on account and it important to the work of the committee. The input can be summarized as follows. The committee acknowledged the importance of account for the implementation of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and declaration on the navigating policy with data to leave no one behind and their value for data-driven decision and policy making. The committee noted with appreciation the increased efforts to compile accounts in the region during the past years, especially environmental and satellite accounts. The committee also noted data and sector expertise needed for account often go beyond the realm and capacity of national sector office and hence require establishment of new partnership and innovative cooperation arrangement. And finally, the committee recognized regional and international collaboration on accounting related business processes can support national efforts and strengthen national capacity through piloting and sharing the research, experimentation, and experience. Next, please. Based on the one input received, I propose the following decision. This proposal is naturally subject to revision based on intervention today by you and my favorite members of the committee. The committee decided 
accounting for integrated statistics and analysis should future in future in its future work with an emphasis on sharing country research experiences and good practices. The committee requested the Bureau in consultation with Secretariat to propose the totality of such work for review and approval by the committee while bearing the need to stay within existing regular budget resources. Let me reiterate the proposals on input from only 10 members of the committee as such is subject to revision and amendment based on our deliberation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my introduction to agenda item 4A. Thank you very much for your attention. My chair, Mr. Chair, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Rozier. Yeah. I now hand over to the Secretariat to facilitate with the discussions on this agenda item. Um, given the special circumstances of this seventh session, may I also ask for the Secretariat's assistance with many comments for a and sharing a summary of the discussions. Uh, Mrs. Ricky Hank Hansen, have the floor, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Dr. Usia, for introducing our discussions on accounting today. Uh, as mentioned in, in the introduction by Dr. Usia, several members and associate members of SCAP have submitted their written inputs prior to the session. All the inputs point to the potential and need for more regional collaboration on accounting. While there is very much a consensus on this point from the inputs, there are many, many different suggestions in these inputs on what kind of regional collaboration could take place going forward on accounting, both in terms of types of accounts, modalities for working together, etc., etc. We have therefore invited four discussants today to share their reflections uh, on, uh, in order to facilitate this committee's deliberations today and uh, its eventual decisions on how to take forward accounting in the region. And with this, uh, I am very pleased to introduce our first discussants uh, today. This is uh, Ms. Chan Marion. Commissioner, Census and Statistics Department from Hong Kong, China. Now, Ms. Uh, Ms. Chan, as countries compile every ever larger number of accounts based on their priorities, we all face issues pertaining to specific accounts, very technical issues. We also face challenges related to accounting more broadly such as institutional collaboration, the legal basis for data sharing, etc. So our question to you today is whether regional collaboration should focus on selected accounts or should it be broader and tackle issues that are relevant to all accounts? Uh, I invite you to share your views on the pros and cons of these options and should we even need to make a choice on this? Uh, Ms. Chan, you have the floor. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Hansen. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So uh, let me start by saying that different economies have their own institutional challenges and circumstances. Thus, it would be difficult to develop a single and one size fits all solution for all economies. Nevertheless, it would always be useful for NSOs to share and learn the experience of each other so as to improve our own statistical systems. 
Now, regarding the two approaches of regional collaboration, that is either a more focused approach on specific accounts or a broad approach to cover general accounting issues per se, each has its own merits and demerits. First, on the broad approach, there are some general issues in common to all accounts. For example, setting up of legal framework to facilitate data sharing among government agencies, enhancing quality assurance framework to facilitate reconciliation of data from different sources, and establishing an IT platform to process and disseminate, uh, and disseminate the statistics. Since these general issues are relevant to all NSOs, irrespective of what accounts they are compiling, more economies may be interested to participate in regional collaboration program on such issues. Besides, the establishment of an integrated production system can populate an accounting framework that allows for more coherent analysis. However, since this approach covers broad issues without specific deliverables, it may be more difficult to achieve fruitful or notable results. Now, as regards the more focused approach on specific accounts, it would be more useful to those economies which have already established a basic framework for accounts compilation and would like to compile additional accounts, such as the tourism account or the satellite account. Although nearly all accounts are harmonized with the SNA, different accounts require different sectoral knowledge and data from very different sources. Hence, with more focused attention in one area at one time, relevant successful experience of an economy can be discussed and documented in greater de detail and can be referenced by uh, other economies more easily. On the other hand, since different economies have different concerns and priorities, some accounts may not be relevant to all economies. It will also be more resources demanding for launching separate programs on specific accounts. In conclusion, both types of regional collaboration programs are useful to NSOs. Which option is a better one depends very much on the stage of statistical development of the economies concerned and the resources available. As economies in this region have basically established a framework for the general account, my will is that it may be more effective to direct regional collaboration efforts to the specific accounts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Yan, for, for these uh, uh, reflections, which, which certainly is a good basis for, for further deliberations. Um, I'm pleased now to move on to our next discussion, uh, discussant and uh, our next question for this uh, special session of the, uh, of the committee. Uh, our next discuss discussant is Mr. Insang Ryu, Assistant Director, Statistics Korea, Republic of Korea. Now, Mr. Ryu, uh, in the inputs received on this agenda item, countries have pointed to many different institutional challenges to boosting accounting, statistical business processes, uh, institutional setups, use and integration of new data sources, etc., etc. Uh, so the question uh, for you is uh, which types of institutional challenges do you believe could most effectively be addressed through regional collaboration on accounts? Please do share your views on how regional collaboration on some of these institutional aspects could best help your national efforts on accounting. Thank you, Mr. Ryu, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Accounting such as national environmental and satellite accounts a collection of statistics that can be compiled only when sufficient basic data for each sector are secured. The minimum required data set recommended to member countries by the United Nations has various data sources, including survey, administrative, satellite data, and so on. Also, cooperation among relevant government organizations is required because production agencies in each country retaining the fundamental data are different. Without the support of legal and institutional foundations for data sharing, 
it is very difficult to compile accounts amidst the international standards. However, considering the priority of database in countries including account, there is a limit to a single country resort. Therefore, we urge a related use can be brought in a high level political meeting at regional level, namely at the high level meeting involving economic and environmental ministers, the importance of official statistics and the need to establish a framework that can be smoothly leads data cooperation among ministries will be discussed. This will provide opportunities for active consultation with relevant ministries and serve as a stepping stone to support cooperation with other institutes in the country. In addition, since it is essential to put and foster experts, a customized training program for each country is proposed that countries with similar backgrounds and levels are grouped together. Statistics Korea will also do our best to contribute to the training of statistical experts in the Asia and Africa region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ryu. And, uh, I would like to also thank you and our previous discussion to very much sticking to the allotted time, given that we are a little bit behind schedule. And I will uh, 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 ask uh, also our next two discussions to kindly stick within the three minutes uh, allocated. Thank you very much again, Mr. Rio. And let us now move uh, from, from, from the east much uh, west to uh, to Azerbaijan to our new our next discussion Mr. Yusuf uh, Yusufo the deputy chairman of the state statistical committee of Azerbaijan and Mr. Yusufo um, there's been there's proposals in terms of modalities for regional collaboration on accounting and these proposals have ranged from seminars to webinars to specific training programs etc now some modalities for collaboration are easier and require less resources than others and other modalities are more effective and more likely to lead to sustainable improvements than others so the question for you today is uh, in your view which modalities should we employ for future regional collaboration on accounting Please do share your views. What do you believe could bring most value to regional collaboration and sharing of research, experimentation, and experiences on accounting? Uh, Mr. Yusufov, you, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Yusufov, uh, please do release your, your microphone. Uh, we cannot hear you. Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Please, please go on. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to hear from everyone and say thank uh, for giving me a chance to finish in the seminar. Before uh, I begin my speech about the modalities, I would like to inform you about the last innovation in this uh, case of Central account, uh, especially on corruption and government accounting. State statistical uh, of Azerbaijan uh, began on satellite accounts in 2015. Uh, this in framework of account, the full tables are complied, uh, expenses for the uh, and, and domestic tourism by classification of goods and services and category of interest, tourism production, supply and use of services, employment in tourism industry. So also about system of environment economic development implementing some following items uh, starting from 2016 
this is a player of, uh, of the system of German accounting. Every year provides a compilation of the energy account, satellite account for energy. In addition, it is, it is an interesting plan to also look at our website, especially on energy account and uh, our official web price. Also, we are participate a European neighbor institution, shared environment system, this uh, name, uh, second East project. Also, we participate in for learning experience on the European and also international recommendations. Also, <coughs> for, the, for the calculation of the environment of the environment of the environment of the well, now it is to develop a method for complying with water resources um, by the end of the year. Now I want to talk about the future movement uh, according uh, which could be, I think, that for the future regional cooperation on accounting. First of all, I would mention positive account on analysis to the fact that in condition of integrated statistics and for enhancing the statistics development will be useful to collaborate directly with research institutes or for example professionals from which appropriate department who are involved in the research of statistical community of countries according to different topics in statistics for example Economic, social, yeah. Mr. Yusifov, uh, your time is up. Would you please wrap wrap up your okay. your reflections? Okay. Thank you. Okay. And the second point is providing experimental research and analysis for different topics. And second point of view condition during COVID nineteen during this pandemic capacity of our junior competition. And fourth topic is to think about the very, very standard and concrete method and the structure of the compilation table of the central framework and development of the international integration input output table. And uh, in this chair, uh, different topics. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for these uh, suggestions, uh, Mr. Yusufov. Uh, let us move on to the last and fourth uh, discussant of, of today on the topic of accounting. It is my pleasure to introduce our next discussant, uh, Dr. Shailia Shyama, the Director General of the, of the National Statistical Office, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation of India. Uh, Dr. Shyama, uh, we see in the note uh, produced for this agenda item that there are a number of both regional global initiatives uh, on accounting. Uh, and the question, of course, arises, what kind of collaboration is suitable for national work, for regional work, for global work? We see some of these initiatives focusing on normative work, others on analytical work, others on capacity strengthening. We've also seen during the past couple of years the Asia-Pacific region being at the forefront of developing uh, new norms and standards, for example, on ocean accounting and disaster-related statistics. Uh, so, in your view, what kind of collaboration should we be looking at uh, on accounting? Should accounting, in terms of regional collaboration, span both normative standard setting work, analytical work, and capacity development work, or should we prioritize? Uh, Dr. Shyama, please uh, share your views on this with us. You have the floor. Hi, morning all. Yeah. Uh, India's strong development cooperation initiatives 
with its neighbors in the region have focused on similar developmental needs and regional priorities. India represented South Asia for two consecutive terms, 2015-17 and 2017-19, in the Inter-Regional Agency and Expert Group on SDGs constituted by the UN Statistical Commission for negotiations on SDG indicators. And uh, India actively participated in the development of the GIF also. India firmly believes in the importance of regional cooperation in achieving SDGs and is committed to pursue this as an important strategic component. Regional platforms can become mutually rewarding exercise for the countries in the region through exchange of innovations and best practices. This also leads to capacity strengthening. India, true to its tradition, as everyone knows, will go on nurturing such partnerships at the regional levels. Classical examples of regional collaboration, the ongoing UNSCAP, Asia Pacific, Data Integration Community of Practice. That is an example. The exchange of knowledge and experiences on data integration purposes of participating members are being used to bring Asia Pacific perspective in the existing guidelines developed by the Conference of European Statisticians, which, which in turn will help in bringing the Asia Pacific version of European guidelines on data integration. Normative work is the key to SDG monitoring mechanism that we all know. And it is crucial to keep the regional circumstances at the core of such assessments. We know there are so many diversities, which is why regional collaboration should have priority. In this context, regional collaboration can keep the way in developing models and methods that are appropriate for the region and take cognizance of the diversity that this region presents. Having said this, it's not that that we don't need uh, presentation of Asia-Pacific in the global uh, groups. So India endorses the enhancement of representation of the countries of Asia and the Pacific in existing global groups in order to secure regional circumstances and future future methodologies. Similarly. As regards analytical and capacity development, internal collaboration will build trust in the data and statistics produced by the statistical systems. It will also help in prioritizing strategies and evidence-based decision-making for achieving the 2030 Agenda of SDGs, taking into account regional and national level development priorities, data requirements, and available infrastructure and resources. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sher uh, Dr. Sherma, for sharing your, your thoughts with us. Uh, now, this concludes the inputs from our discussions to this agenda item. And as requested by the chair, it's now uh, my pleasure to hand it over to the secretary of this uh, committee, uh, Sharita, to, uh, to manage uh, our formal deliberations on this agenda item. Uh, please, Sharita. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Ms. Hansen. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as requested by the chair, I now invite comments on agenda item 4A from the floor. To maintain order and for delegations to be ready to take the floor, when I call on the speaker, I will also announce the delegation next in line. Please be reminded to keep your interventions to no more than three minutes. So the first speaker on my list um, is the distinguished, de distinguished delegate of China, followed by Philippines. Dear distinguished guests, uh, delegates, I would like to share with you my observations first and foremost. In principle, we support what has been stated in the document about promoting uh, the, the work. Sorry, I could not hear it clearly. Secondly, I would like to share with you about uh, the ongoing work. 
National Bureau of Statistics of China attaches great importance to the accounting efforts and continue to promote and successfully carry out the local GDP statistical accounting developed and producing the national and the local balance sheet and explore the account on the natural resources. Promoting the research of capital accounts. Sorry, I could not hear it clearly. As for the national economic accounting, our progress has been made. As for the UN Environment Accounting Expert Committee member and the London Accounting Group member, China has participated in the UN-led natural capital ecosystem valuation accounts projects and actively exploring and researching on the ocean resources accounts. Thirdly, we would like to share with you about China's experiences helping to revising and improving the ecosystem accounts. We hope that we could provide the valuable inputs. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, distinguished delegate of China. Philippines, you have the floor, followed by India. Good day, Mr. Chair. The Philippines, the Philippines Authority, is that the committee has identified accounts, that is, national accounts, tourism satellite accounts, environmental economic accounts as a priority area of discussion in the region. Being aligned with the five action areas of the collective vision and framework for action, the Philippine Statistics Authority fully supports and commits to further strengthen the accounting system in the country. In the first quarter of 2020, the Philippine Statistics Authority has been successful in completing the overall revision and rebasing of the Philippine system of national accounts covering the production and expenditure side of the gross domestic product. Most notable among the changes are the change in the base year from 2000 to 2018 and the adoption of the most recent classification systems. The revised and rebased time series covers the period 2000 to 2019, which includes both annual and quarterly productions of industries, expenditures of items, and net primary income from the rest of the world. In addition, the Philippine Statistics Authority is currently rebasing the regional accounts both the, on production and expenditure side. The Philippine Statistics Authority has likewise released the revised Philippine Tourism Satellite Accounts this year following the overall revision and rebasing of the Philippine systems of national accounts. The revised Philippine Tourism Satellite Accounts series spans the period 2000 to 2018 and for the first time, the Philippine Statistics Authority released two additional indicators covering the period 2012 to 2019 in its annual compilation. The Philippines was also part of the working group of experts on measuring sustainable tourism, which initiated the development of the statistical framework for such. At present, measuring sustainable tourism in the Philippines compiles energy and water consumption of tourism activities as well as their carbon dioxide emission. The Philippine Statistics Authority also supports various initiatives in environmental accounting, including the establishment of a network of experts. The Philippine Statistics Authority seeks to mainstream this in promoting the system of environmental and economic accounting with the sustainable goal, development goals indicators. Recognizing the opportunities and challenges in the compilation of these accounts, it is crucial that there is an avenue for sharing of experiences and technical expertise for the improvement of the compilation efforts. The Philippines strongly advocates for the inclusion of accounts in the future work of the committee to enhance the growing appetite for the sharing of researches and experiences in the development of methodologies. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, distinguished delegate of the Philippines. Uh, distinguished delegate of India, we see a request to speak uh, from your side. Uh, would you like to add further inputs to this agenda item? Yes. Yeah. With the rapidly increasing awareness about the issues concerning the sustainability and the need for accounting for nature, there is an urgent need for implementing the UN prescribed framework, the system of environmental economic accounting. NSO India recognizes the fact that the implementation of SIA framework will need to be a cooperative and collaborative effort of not just the different agencies of the government, but also the research institutions, academia, and civil society organizations. NSO India has set up an inter-ministerial group on environment accounting, which meets twice a year to ensure active collaboration of all stakeholders. NSO India has started compiling environmental accounts at the national level since 2018. NSO India has ensured the continuity of efforts to provide an assessment of environment that can be integrated into decision making, and those efforts are continuous. NSO India has been participating in several pilots of the UNSD, including one on exploring alignment between SIA and EA and the corporate social responsibility type of initiatives in the private sector, both in terms of data sources as well as methods, the findings of which will help in the revision process of the UN CR framework. India is also working on setting up a community of practice for environment firms to establish a system, systematic and sustained collaboration mechanism for sharing experiences in environmental problems and to work collaboratively to apply accounting principles in support of natural capital outcomes in view of the fact that the work on environmental accounts is still in the developing stages. Countries of the region could leverage, leverage on the best practices and lessons learned by other countries to improve the stage of implementation in their respective countries. Regional collaboration would also provide the necessary handhold in view of the geographical and socio-economic similarity of the region, in the, of the countries in the region. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished, distinguished delegate of India. Malaysia, you have the floor, followed by Bangladesh. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, and. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have this opportunity to share our experience as well as to share our thoughts about the compilation of accounting for integrated statistics and analysis. And uh, before we start, we really support an effort made by the Committee on Regional Initiative for the Environmental Economic Accounting, which are to include regional collaboration on system of integrated environmental economic accounting and also tourism. Uh, so framework to anchor the strategy in the new policy environment, SDG and other policy related to the sustainable growth. The initiative proposed by the committee such as collaboration on multi-domain statistics, sharing of research, experimentation and experiences in the development of the environment economic account are a good initiative to encourage and facilitate countries to work on SEA and other economic accounting as well. Sharing our experience on this uh, compilation of the integrated statistics and uh, we believe that uh, for the past uh, few years we have successfully produced quite a number of satellite accounts such as tourism satellite account, ICT satellite account and most recently we have published our SEA on uh, energy and water. And following that uh, we also being selected uh, by the United Nations to conduct a development account project on supporting member states in developing and strengthening environmental and integrated environment accounting, uh, economic accounting 
for improved monitoring of SDG for the period of 2016-2017. And uh, we believe this has uh, further enhanced our capacity in uh, producing more relevant and uh, granular data for uh, the usage of uh, stakeholders as well as for the mass users. And uh, another uh, progress made by us uh, currently, we are embarking on the compilation of measuring the sustainability of tourism, uh, or in the short form we call it as MST. And it's again uh, produce and uh, uh, offer and a greater opportunity to collaborate between our partners here in Malaysia and also our development partners uh, at international level. And the challenges that we face currently is uh, exploring a new data and uh, also uh, identifying the mess or the best methodology to be adopted in producing the MST. Perhaps uh, we believe uh, in, in the near future, we may have uh, to get some uh, assistance, uh, basically on, on the technical side from the UNSCAP or other parties that can help us on uh, providing uh, some technicalities so that I can, uh, again, we can uh, another on the another step, future step, we can uh, produce a more data that uh, basically uh, affecting uh, the national uh, interest. And uh, perhaps we can see uh, in the near future, this will be bearing a fruit uh, with the strong cooperation with all the partners. Thank you very much. Thank you, distinguished to, delegate uh, of Secretary. Malaysia. A distinguished delegate of Bangladesh, you have the floor, followed by Pakistan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving me the floor. I want to share the intervention and experience or the current status of Bangladesh in this regard. BBS has started fifth revision and revising of national accounts from 2005-06 to 2015-16, while 15 economic activity sectors will be extended to 19 sectors according to Isaac Division 4. Significant number of surveys are conducted for updating data coverage and deflectors for the upcoming revision and revising of national accounts. Sequence of accounts has been done for the year 1995-96, and 2010-11. BBS has taken initiative for compilation of tourism satellite accounts, while survey data has been extracted for 2018-19 on domestic tourism. Analysis of data and survey findings are underway. It is noted that data for inbound tourism could not be collected due to COVID-19 situation, even though data collection instruments have been finalized. Bangladesh has prepared Bangladesh Environmental Statistics Framework BESF 2016 to 2030. According to the frame, we have planned for compiling the resource accounts like land and soil, water, forest, agriculture, natural gas, energy, poverty and environment access accounts, experimental ecosystem accounts, aligned with United Nations system of environmental economic accounting central framework within 2023. The government of Bangladesh has formed a national interministerial committee for collecting, compiling, analyzing, and disseminating environmental statistics and accounts in light of SIA under the leadership of Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics and involving the Minister of Environment and Forest and Minister of Disaster Management and Relief, among others. Bangladesh is actively and regularly participating in the meeting of the steering group for the regional program on economic statistics. There are significant updates in the field of economic statistics in Bangladesh, in the domain price and costs, behavior of oil rate index has been changed to fiscal year 2010 from fiscal year 1969-70, and being compiled monthly instead of quarterly, as recommended by RPPS, as well behavior of consumer price index 
has been changed to 2005-6 from 1995-96 and released monthly basis. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Bangladesh. Pakistan, you have the floor, followed by Samoa. Uh, thank you very much uh, for providing me the opportunity. Uh, Pakistan Bureau of Statistics uh, here in Pakistan has uh, developed national account system at the federal level. And uh, Pakistan Bureau of Statistics is producing uh, national accounts uh, uh, annually. But uh, there is a program uh, we, are, uh, we will produce quarterly national accounts as well. The national accounts are produced uh, here according to the international standards and definitions, of course, which are uh, um, comparable at the international level, at the regional level. In addition to using our own data produced at the federal level uh, through different censuses and surveys, which are used for the uh, national accounts, we also use the data um, produced by other organizations working in the country at provincial levels. Pakistan is producing economic uh, statistics and uh, providing uh, um, gross domestic product, uh, um, gross national income, and national health accounts as well at the national level. Uh, and uh, we are also uh, shifting our base year for the national accounts from 2005-06 to 2015-16. However, we are planning to uh, produce satellite accounts uh, in coming couple of years for which we need technical support by the escape. However, environmental accounts and tourism accounts are uh, new concept and there is no work uh, in Pakistan regarding these accounts. So we need uh, uh, technical assistance for these to develop these uh, uh, accounts uh, in Pakistan. So we request, we suggest that uh, committee may uh, consider upgradation of the national accounts in Pakistan in coming years and, uh, and they may visit our, uh, to study our national account system so that strategies could be planned and implemented for the improvement of national accounts in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Pakistan. Samoa, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you, but we don't see you uh, see your image. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to thank um, SGAP for continuing uh, technical support to some more in relation to the water accounts and the energy accounts. And I would like to uh, note or uh, acknowledge the support with our oceans accounts. Um, in saying that, I uh, would like to continue uh, reaching out collaboration in helping us to strengthen the ocean account. I know we have been uh, piloting this with um, other five other countries, but uh, we like to see uh, continuous support um, in strengthening the ocean account in Istanbul. Thank you very much. Thank you, distinguished delegate of Samoa. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we have exhausted our time allowed for this item, and I also do not see any further request to speak. So as requested by the chair, I now invite my colleague, Ms. Ricky Monk Hansen from the Secretariat to share a summary of discussions on Agenda 4A. Uh, I believe the interpretation services will continue for another 10 minutes until 10 minutes past 1 p.m. Uh, is that correct? Thank you. Uh, 
thank you, uh, Sharita, and thank you to the many delegations making interventions on this agenda item. In summary, the committee stressed the importance of accounting, including national accounts, environmental economic accounts, ecosystem accounting, satellite accounts, for the sustainable development goals including the, the need to, to advance accounting for uh, implementing the frameworks that have been agreed by the committee, such as the collective vision uh, and framework for action and the declaration on navigating, uh, navigating policy with data to leave no one behind. The committee expressed uh, its appreciation for the many efforts being undertaken by several countries to advance accounting, including efforts to continue to expand the scope and quality of national accounts to investigate and embark on testing on ecosystem accounting such as ocean accounts, on environmental economic accounts, including on water, energy, and forest, on tourism satellite accounts, including the newly developed uh, framework for measuring the sustainability of tourism. The committee agreed that there is a large potential for collaboration and a need for technical assistance to make sure that all countries uh, can advance their accounting work. There was much uh, experimentation pointed out by several countries, including standards that are still under development. And this is uh, one of the key aspects where the potential for collaboration was stressed by several uh, delegates. Also, several members of the committee offered to contribute to further standards development, to share their experiences and their technical knowledge with others in the region, uh, including on the frameworks that are under revision on ecosystem accounts. Finally, the committee agreed to feature accounting for integrated statistics and analysis in its future work, with an emphasis on sharing country research, sharing experiences, good practices, sharing, providing technical assistance among countries in the region. And the committee also requests that there is a proposal for further consultations on the exact nature of this future collaboration, including uh, modalities, and as such, this would be a proposal that would be considered further by the Bureau of the Committee. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair and Madam Secretary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Serro and Mrs. Hansen. Um, actually, this brings us to the conclusion of discussions on the agenda uh, 4A, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, delegate, for making a very um, uh, is, uh, This has been and uh, interesting day. And now it is time to adjourn. I see you uh, and I will give the secretariat for any administrative announcements. Thank you very much once again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the secretariat would like to thank you for your active participation today. We would like to remind you that the session will start tomorrow, Thursday, the 27th of August, 2020, at 10 a.m. Bangkok time, and we will adjourn at 1 p.m. Bangkok time. We will take up agenda items 3A and B, as well as agenda item 4B, tomorrow. 
Kindly note, the link to access the meeting through Kudo tomorrow will be the same as the link today. However, the link for YouTube tomorrow will change and is available in the program. Delegates who join us uh, via Kudo are encouraged to join us 30 minutes in advance of the session so that you can test your connection. Have a very good afternoon and see you all tomorrow. Uh, I recognize a distinguished delegate of uh, China. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you. Through the evening's meeting, we have noticed that due to connection and technical difficulties, some of the delegates, including the delegate of the Senate, have been unable to participate. Distinguished delegate of China, I'm sorry, we don't have interpretation services at this time. 嗯，我还还有还有翻译，还可以接着翻译吗？好，请您发言。So, I noticed this uh, morning session, the agenda, we have a connection, we, we have a internet connection, technical issues, some uh, interventions from uh, delegates. We couldn't hear well. Therefore, we may better understand your views and the standing points and also for our further uh, collaboration in the region, for the reference, we, we hope the Secretariat could meet the reference with the previous, uh, previous arrangement in the previous sessions. We may collect all the materials they, of their interventions and post to the official website. Therefore, in the future, we can have a, a further research on this for reference. Thank you so much. Thank you for those suggestions, uh, distinguished delegate of China. Indeed, uh, we will be collecting all the interventions, uh, which will be reflected both in the chair's summary, which will be available after the committee session, and we will also post these um, on the committee web page. So we encourage all delegations that made interventions today to kindly submit your interventions to us in writing uh, through our corporate uh, email address. Uh, thank you. Have a good afternoon, and see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.